I'm justified. I'm sanctified. I'm accepted. I am righteous. I am holy. Glory. Amen. Woo. Glory to God. Blessed. I want to take up your offerings. Now listen. Listen, I want to take up your offering. Listen, listen, listen before you start taking the offerings. I said it yesterday. When you come to a conference like this, and you're so blessed by the word of God, it is honorable for you to sacrificially and intentionally give. Be intentional about your giving. You know, people say, Dr. Demina and the rest, they are teaching people not to give. They even said that tithe is not New Testament. You know, that's, my pro that's the problem pastors have with me. Oh, how can Dr. Domino say we shouldn't be paying tight? It's not in the Bible. It's in the Bible, but it's not in the New Testament. In the New Testament, nobody paid tight. The church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus, the cornerstone. Huh? Which means Christianity, Christianity is apostolic and historic. That means whatever the apostles and Jesus didn't do, we don't do. See? Jesus never took tithe. He never paid tithe. Paul, Peter, James, John, no tithing. In Acts, no tithing. All the epistles, no tithing. Why? It's not New Testament. But Abraham paid tithe. And Abraham was not in the, in the Old Testament. Yes, Abraham paid tithe because historically in Abraham's day, tithing was like tax. They paid tax with 10%. I have all the historical documents and they're there in public domain long before Abraham was born. So he learned from the history of their culture that whenever you, you go to war and you have spoils of war, you pay the tax of it. But because he acknowledged that it was God who gave him the victory of the war, he took from the spoil of war 10% and he, he gave. He didn't pay. He gave. He didn't pay. He gave. He didn't pay. He gave. That means 10% was Abraham's generosity level at that time. <laughs> you got that, right? <laughs> I'm glad you got it. <laughs> he gave it to the king of Sodom. And then the question is, after the spoil of war, did Abraham give another tithe? No. Who else? Jacob. But you know Jacob. You know Jacob? You know Jacob. He promised, but no verse says he fulfilled it. <laughs> we have the promise. If you take me and bring me back, I'll give you a tent. He went and came, but we didn't see where he gave the tent. But in the New Testament, people sold lands, sold houses, and brought everything. Because in the New Testament, we don't give him percentages. We give generosity. We give with joy. We give to the best of our abilities. Because we're in a love relationship with God Almighty. I didn't hear a good amen. amen. Are you blessed? So I want to take up your offerings. And we have to be intentional as we give this afternoon. Father, thank you for everybody under the sound of my voice. We give because we are given. We give because money is not even a good value in exchange for what you have done for us. But we give because your word, your gospel on the earth requires money to get to the people for whom you died. So in our giving, we are intentional because our money is a missionary in getting the gospel to men in darkness. Lord, I pray that as we give in honor of Christ, as we give in honor of the word, and as we give with understanding, our offerings are a sweet smell before you today. In we pray. And every believer says a powerful amen. Now you can go grab an offering, everybody. Grab your offerings. The M-Pesa account will come on the screen. And those of you who want to support the conference and give, you know, much more than what you're giving right now, at the end of the service, you can talk to Pastor Jane and tell her, you know, I want to support much more. I want to give much more. And remember, tomorrow is Sunday, and I'm going to be preaching twice. I'm going to be preaching by 10 in the morning, and I'm going to be preaching by 2 in the afternoon. Two services. God punished the devil. We will cover the syllabus. Somebody say, I hear you.
So you need to get on your phones to not get everybody in Nairobi to come. Somebody say, but I have a church. It's not about church. We came to see Jesus. So tomorrow you can excuse yourself from your church and tell your pastor, I continue next Sunday. Let me go and grab some things from Dr. Damina before he gets out of Nairobi. Say, I hear you. And when coming, don't come alone. Grab your neighbors, grab your friends, put them in your car. Don't drive your car empty. If nobody's following you on the road, stop. Tell somebody, get in, we're going to church. They will get in the car, bring them here. Amen. Amen. And then I came with books. There are a lot of books for you to get. Go get the books. As soon as we give our offerings, get, grab the books. Pastor Jane will tell you what to do. And I will sign and autograph as many books as I can today. But it's always a joy to be with you in Nairobi. Always a joy to see your, your handsome and beautiful faces. You people look Jesusistic. Is that English like that? Don't your neighbors say you look Jesusistic? You know, if there's no, we create, we're a nation. Holy nation. You look jesus -tick. You know, you look jesus <laughs> Glory to God. All right, we take the offerings. If there are two, three, four, five questions, I'd love to answer them. All right, so I want to clear so that you go home fully assured. You don't go with anything hanging. Amen? All right, you can be seated as the offering baskets go around and those of you making transfers, the account is on the, on the screen. Let's do that while the questions start coming. You want them to write? Put it on a piece of paper. If you have a question, write it on a piece of paper and just uh, allow it through the ashes to find its way to the front. Pastor Vincent will be collecting the questions and uh, Papa will be answering your questions live and direct. And for those of you who are paying by M-Pesa, the till number, you go to buy goods. The till number is on your screen. It's 5717155. I'll say that again, 571. 7155 if you're paying by M-Pesa. So let the questions come so that Papa can ask, uh, answer them very quickly. We will not keep you for long. Just uh, two or three questions and then uh, we see you tomorrow powerfully at 10 a.m. Go on our page and just share it on your page so that all the people within your influence can hear what we just thought. Say I hear you. You don't have to pay for television broadcast. Your page is television audience there. Put the message there. Everybody grab if you have three pages, five, ten. And of course, do us another favor. Grab the message if you can. Download it. Put them on WhatsApp groups. All the groups where you belong. Put them in there. Let's get the word to the ends of the earth. And thank you for complying. Share the video. Share them. Share them, everybody. All right. While they were waiting for the questions, share the videos. Open your Facebook page. Nairobi, let's do it. People in Nairobi are on social media like fire. Go there, find them where they are. Give them something to chew on tonight before they sleep. Share the video. If you know groups, join as many as 70, 80 groups, 100. Put the message in there. All those market women association group, traders association group, you know, all of them. Those groups on social media, go there, put the messages. Let's get the message to the ends of the earth. Praise God. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for complying. Thank you, thank you. All right, Pastor Jane, are you ready? Yes, um... Is Jesus Christ a man 100% or God 100% or both? That's one. Then please explain about the Trinity, deity, existence. Well, Jesus is 100% God as though not man and 100% man as though not God. I have a full teaching on the Trinity. I will encourage you to order for it. It is called Reflecting the Father. It's part one to seven. Reflecting the Father. It explains to you Trinity. Trinity is God Almighty. In, in the interest of saving man, became a man. And after dying and rising from the dead, Uh, is it right for a, uh, a believer to marry a Muslim? Light and darkness has nothing in common. What fellowship has light with darkness? The moment you marry a Muslim, your father-in-law is Satan. So get ready. Father-in-law will visit you very soon. And he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Is it clear? What is attracting you in a Muslim? You need sanctification. 
There's nothing in a Muslim that can attract me. There's nothing in an unbeliever that can attract me. What? Child of the devil, child of God. What connection? There's no contact. So for asking that, you may need some discipleship. May need to take you through some Bible study classes. You know, I have a teaching on wisdom for living. That will help you a lot. Wisdom for living. I think it's part 1 to 20 something. Wisdom for living. It will help you with all that with scriptures as to why you cannot marry anybody. In fact, you can't even marry a Christian who is not on fire like you are. Because two cannot work together except they agree. It's important. Because marriage can determine whether you live well on earth or you live crying on earth. A marriage can determine whether you fulfill the purpose of God or you live below purpose. So marriage is a critical part of your life on earth. Therefore, you must obey the scriptural instructions, the wisdom of God on how to marry well and live well. My series on wisdom for living will help you a lot. Next. What happened during uh, the baptism of Jesus when a sound was heard? Well, John the Baptist baptized Jesus and he had a vision. And in his vision, he had all kinds of encounters. That's all. He had the sound of heaven open. He had the voice. It's a vision. It wasn't physical. Because others didn't hear it. He alone heard it. It's a vision. Supernatural. Just like it was on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says there was a rushing mighty wind. It filled the whole house. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues as of simile. As of. Fire didn't come on them. Fire didn't come. So it was a metaphor as fire and it sat upon each of them and they began to speak in tongues. So there were things to see and things to hear on the day of Pentecost. All right. So um, it's a metaphor that was used to explain. But like I've always said, you cannot understand Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 from Acts chapter 2 because it's eyewitness account. To understand Acts chapter 2, you've got to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 where brother Paul dealt with the doctrine of tongues. What is the difference between paradise and heaven? Paradise was where people were kept in the Old Testament who died in faith. When Jesus rose from the dead, it was closed down. So today when people die, they die in Christ. And to be absent from the body is to be present with Christ, not to be in paradise. Okay, so paradise is no more. Our paradise now is Christ. Does sin have any consequences? Does it hinder any blessing? No, sin doesn't, sin doesn't have any consequences with God. But it has consequences on earth. You steal the catch you the cut of your hand. You remain the rest of your life without a hand. What is that? Consequence. Okay. You go to steal, they shoot you with gun through your eyes. You become blind. You are still born again. Tongue talking. In fact, when the gun hit your eye, you went, Engamondolodobo. Nothing stops it. But you've lost your eye. So yes, sin has consequences on earth. Does it stop blessings? Not blessings from God, but blessings within men. Because if you're not living well in your relationship with people, they will not be disposed towards you where favor is concerned. They will not help you. They will not assist you. So yes, it has consequences. Dire consequences on earth. But with God, Christ guarantees your forgiveness. The message of Peter and Jude. You know, I can even, I can even add one more. How many of you know that Samson committed suicide? How many of you know, along with suicide, he committed murder? Homicide. How many of you know he did not repent? How many of you know he did not confess? Yes. But how many of you know he's in heaven? Samson is in heaven. Yes, sir. By faith, Samson. Hebrews 11, an elder who through faith obtained good report. Tomorrow you will find out why. The message of Peter and Jude about the angels that left their first estate, does it claim that salvation can be lost? No, angels lost their first estate. simply says that angels left the purpose for which they were created. And in losing the purpose for which they were created, they became Satan and demons. No salvation for them. No salvation. Jesus didn't die to save angels. He died to save man. <laughs> is it clear? He died to save man, not angels. Alright, so they left their first estate. They left what God created them for. And they turned the use of God's purpose for their lives into something evil. So hell fire is created for those angels. 
are there territorial demons or rather are uh, territorial demons real and what about black spots on the road where accidents always happen is there a demon of death assigned all that is kenyan african traditional religion <laughs> all those things you said <laughs> It's Kenyan, African, traditional religion. It has nothing in the Bible that, that gives that validity. Once you hit the road, there are no black spots. The light of God shines. Nothing territorial. All demons are under the feet of the believer. The believer is the one in charge of the territory. We are the territorial forces. Born of God. Are we teaching here? Don't let all these deliverance experts mess you up. How many of you have even had, there are some teachings coming out. I don't know. It's, some of them are coming out of Nigeria and some of them are coming from America. They talk about portals. They talk about depths. Have you had such teachings? Portals, depths, dimensions, nonsense. Plain nonsense. There is no portal anywhere. Christ is all you have. There are no depths. The only depth you have is in Christ. And nothing can be deeper than Christ. There are no levels. Christ is your level. Am I teaching here? Those are, story, those, those are extra biblical things. Don't listen to these things. They are plain nonsense. Vain philosophy. Idle fancies. Don't let them, be, don't let them spoil you. According to Colossians chapter 2, verse 7, 8, and 9. Don't let them spoil you. You have already come to Christ. That is the highest. That is the deepest. That is the widest place you can ever come to in Christ. Those people that Jesus told your sins are forgiven. How were they forgiven before he died? Because forgiveness is in God's nature. Forgiveness is in God's nature. That is God for you. Okay? But Christ had to die because man sinned and man was under the control of the God of this world. So the death of Christ broke that control to give man the freedom to believe the gospel. Is it clear? So it's for your benefit he died, not for his benefit. The death of Christ didn't change God's character. God's character has been consistent. He forgave Cain. He forgave gave Abel. He forgave all of them. But Abel, I mean, he forgave even Adam. But Adam rejected forgiveness. Adam didn't accept God's offer. That's why it's called transgression. He rejected God's offer. But God has always been a forgiving father from the beginning till the end. Is that clear? Okay. Since heaven is a gift to a believer, does it mean that when you're born again and continue sinning, you will still go to heaven? How shall we that are dead to sin continue daring? Know you not, questionnaire, that as many of you as were baptized into Christ, you were baptized into his death. Don't you know that born again means you die to sin? How can a man that died to sin live in sin? They say you died yesterday, you were buried. Then they say on Monday you were giving a lecture in the University of Nairobi. How? Why are you thinking like that? Don't be thinking like that. Don't let people spoil you. Say, but there are Christians who sin. Yes, there are Christians who sin, but it doesn't mean they are continuing. They sin because they are suffering from identity crisis. They don't know who they are. Paralegis or my. So since they don't know who they are, they are acting contrary to who they are. As they begin to grow in the knowledge of Christ, their appetite will change. So it's identity crisis. It's not that they are continuing in sin. It's just that they don't know who they are. So they are behaving contrary to who they are. And once they know who they are, their appetite dies. Their true identity comes into manifestation. Is it clear? There's no believer that enjoys sin. I've not seen one enjoy. No. Because it's not in your character. It's not your nature. That's why when you sin, you feel bad. You feel so sad. After a while, you feel like I've you just entered a place you shouldn't have entered. Because, yes, it does not your nature. Unbelievers sin and they're happy. They come and give testimony. Say, hey, man, I just did it, man. I've developed three different ways of doing it. I'll do it again tomorrow. Because they love it. But not a believer. A believer knows that, mm, 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 I shouldn't have been there. 
I won't go there again. Thank you, Lord. Because he knows who he is. Is it clear? Yes. Uh, why did Paul baptize in uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 13 to 15 if baptism is not necessary? Why did Paul baptize? Did we talk about baptism today? No. And I don't like answering questions from what I didn't teach. But I know you must have had my teaching elsewhere. Put it up, 1 Corinthians. Let's see whether Paul really baptized. And if he did, why? And if he told us why, did he continue? And if he continued, why? And if he doesn't continue, why? Put it up, brother. 1 Corinthians 1, 13 to 15. You are the best I have had on this trip, man. Amen. You throw the scriptures before I even land, man. Your fingers are working with my tongue. <laughs> Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified? This is Paul talking to Corinth. Because the church was full of divisions. That's the premise on which Paul is teaching now. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Now when you, look at me, brethren. When you hear baptized, don't think of water. Mm -mm. Don't think of water. Baptism is not water. Baptism is the Greek word baptizo. It means to be immersed. I can baptize you with, with uh, what's your dream? Tamarine. <laughs> This man is thinking of dollars. I said, baptize the reward. He said, dollars. Take it. <laughs> now we are finished with dollars. I can baptize you with tamarine. Samia. Tamarine is called Samia in Nigeria. Samia. That's tamarine. And it's in a Hausa language. Because tamarine, they have it in northern Nigeria. So you call it tamarind in Nigeria. How some people call it Samia. All right, so I can baptize you with tamarind. I can also baptize you with teaching. You've been here for hours, right? I baptize you with teaching. Some of you are sitting down to even say that yes, it's difficult. You are dazed. Yes? You are still digesting because so much was released within a short time. Is that true? That's baptism. Then there is baptism with water. So when you see baptize, ask which one. Okay, let me give you an illustration. We'll come back to 1 Corinthians 1 13. Go to 1 Corinthians 10 1. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 1. We'll come back here. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I will not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea. Next verse. And we are all baptized unto Moses. Is Moses a pool of water? So they were baptized to Moses means they were baptized into Moses' teaching. See? So when you hear baptized, he's not talking about water. So back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 13. 1 13, brother. Good. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul and he didn't say which baptism? Next verse. I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius. Next verse. Lest any should say. That means after I did those two people, I didn't baptize again. Why? Lest any should say that I baptized in my own name. Why? Next verse. And I baptized also the household of Stephanas. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the words of wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. So water baptism makes the cross of Christ of none effect. So what is Paul saying? When I got born again newly, and I joined the church, they were baptizing, I followed to baptize. But as I grew, I stopped so that I will not destroy my mission. My mission is not water baptism. My mission is to preach Christ. Is it clear? Remember the book of Acts is a book of transitioning from the Old Testament to the New. So you will see carryovers which we call cross testamental applications. But as they went on, they dropped them because those were not part of the New Testament. Is it clear? Yes. Okay, please explain about the Lord's Prayer. Is it changed today? Well, 
Well, there's no lost prayer. And if it is the lost prayer, let him pray it. I'm not the Lord. He's the Lord. Let the Lord pray his prayer. Is he not the Lord? Are you the Lord? Let the Lord pray his prayer. <laughs> Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is my prayer. Now the truth is, it's not the Lord's prayer. It's translators that Bible did the Lord's prayer. It was actually Jesus unveiling the character of the Father. It was not a prayer as much as it was a revelation of the Father's character. And that prayer there was not written, was not well translated. If you go to the original, when he begins to say, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Hallowed be thy name means your name is separate. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth. The kingdom came when Jesus came. The will of God was done when Jesus died and rose. So it's no more a prayer. It's a thing of thanksgiving. Okay? Now, King James says, lead us not into temptation. James says, let no man say when I'm tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted. If you go to the original, it didn't say lead us not into temptation. The original says, you lead us not into temptation. But you deliver us from evil. You forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That is, when we look at you, we see your character. And when we see your character, we reflect it in our relationships. So it was not a prayer as much as a revelation of the character of the Father. Is it clear? My teaching on reflecting the Father has all of that. If you order for it again. If the Ten Commandments are different from the 612 laws of Moses, should we obey the Sabbath? How? The Ten Commandments are different, but they must be explained. Now, if you observe, in the Ten Commandments, there are no curses. But in the law, there are curses. That, that's the first thing to make you know that they are different. Number two, when Jesus rehearsed the Ten Commandments, he didn't mention all. He only mentioned six. Go and read. Go and read in Matthew. When Jesus talked about the Ten Commandments, he only mentioned six. When Paul taught, he only mentioned six. Why? Because in the handling of the Ten Commandments, in the handling, in the handling of it, the way Moses communicated, it had additions. When Jesus came, he separated and reinforced six of them. And Paul echoed them in the epistles. Sabbath is not part of it. Sabbath was taught as a commandment because Sabbath was a revelation of Christ. Christ is our day. Christ is our Sabbath. When they asked Jesus why he cast out demons on the Sabbath day, he said, ah, which of you will have an animal on a Saturday that will be falling into a ditch and you will not save your animal? He said, the man is not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath is made for man. And I am the Lord of the Sabbath. That means I am Sabbath in a person. So when you come into Christ, you have come into Sabbath, which means you can worship on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, any day you wish to worship and it is accepted. So it's no more a day, it's a person. Is it clear? Sabbath is a present. Finally, Papa, do you have a Bible school for those of us who want to learn more because of ministry? Yeah, we have a Bible school and our Bible school is accredited, which means if we give you a degree or a diploma or a certificate, it has educational value for your universities. But it's in Nigeria. But I just spoke to Pastor Jane that as I came into this country, I really feel strong about what God is doing in Kenya. And I really feel it. Honestly, in my spirit, I sense very strongly that this is Kenyan time. How many of you, how many of you sense this? Look, to be very honest with you, I don't talk like this. Because I have many places to go. If you go on my Facebook page, we've already announced Zambia. Botswana will soon be on the, on the page for announcement. Namibia will soon be on the page. Zimbabwe will soon be on the page. 
We have America. We have UK. I'm going next week. We have, we have Canada. We have Ghana. We have Togo. We have Kotonou. We have South Africa. There are nations waiting for me to come. In fact, South Africa has been on my case for three weeks now. We want the dates. Give us, Papa, we want the dates because we want to start saving money. Give us the dates. They will send Pastor Matthew. They've sent everybody around me to, to block me to get a date. I'm still looking for a date for them. Honestly. So the demand is global. Everywhere they're calling me to come. But I truly feel in my spirit that this is Kenya time. Honestly. The veil has lifted over Kenya. But men must enter in and teach the gospel. If you agree, say I hear you. I hear you. So I've told Pastor Jane, as soon as I get home, I'll look into my calendar. The first thing we will do next day, we'll do a number of things with you in Kenya. We'll do a number of things. But I'm not giving you specific yet. I'm going to check and see what works for you. But the first thing I'm sure we're going to do as the new year opens is a Bible school here. Okay? So, what will, what will come in and do a Bible school, it, it may not be a full Bible school, because I, I don't have all the time, but we may do like 8 to 10 days, leg 1. Then I will go. When we have time, we'll come and do leg 2. We go. When we have time, leg 3. If at any time we don't have time and you need to cover up something, we can do online. You all come online, you learn. When we have time, we come physically, because I like physical classes. Online is limited, but where we can't help you to do online. But I really want to take as many people in, in Kenya, not just Nairobi, the whole nation, through a proper Bible school where we teach you everything. We teach you all the curses. We help you really see everything. We open the Bible, pieces it for you, and leave you to collate it together. So that anywhere you enter and they are speaking, you just tell them, calm down. You take it and you do it like this. And you sh do you like that? So I told Pastor Jane, we'll make a plan. I will look at my diary within the first three, four months of the year, between January and April, and see how when I can come in and do two weeks or 10 days or something. And then we can do Bible school. All of you take time off. Bible school, our Bible school is crazy. We keep you in class 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. We and you in class, not you alone, all of us. We teach you, teach you, teach you, teach you. We pray in tongues. We teach you, teach you. We pray in tongues. We teach you, teach you. Pray in tongues. We answer all your questions. We teach, 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 teach. By the time we finish, you're going home. All you're seeing is the Bible. You manage to sleep. The next morning, you're waking up. You're back to class. By the time we finish, you can never be normal. You will be so changed without knowing when you got changed. How many of you would like us to do that? So, listen. The adverts will soon be on social media. We'll use every platform to push it out. And then you help us share it. Talk to people. Tell pastors. I really want a lot of church pastors to come in. You know, bring them in. Because a lot of people that have problems are pastors. But if pastors can come down, we'll go through the Bible together. All their issues will be resolved. They will leave the Bible school fully equipped to help the population in their congregations. Some of you can even sponsor pastors. You can go and say, Pastor. There's a good school. I will pay for you to attend. Yes. That's my contribution to your ministry. You can do that for pastors. Encourage them to come into the classes. And church leaders, church workers, you know, in churches across Kenya. Some of you can reach out to your friends in Nakuru, Mombasa, Kisumu, Kakamega, Kakamega, Kakamega. Bring them so that those two weeks they all come into town. You can get a boarding house somewhere where they don't have to pay much money. And they all camp in there, come to classes. We teach, 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 teach. Set it. Set these people on fire. Then by the time we release them, things will just be shaking all over Kenya. Boom, 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 boom. They will not know what is happening. Boom, 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 boom. From every corner, things are shaking. By the time they turn, Jesus has taken over everywhere. Are you excited about it? So, Pastor Jane, it's over to you. You know, right. um, we can set it up and then we look for dates. Thank you, Then sir. we come in and do that. Thank and you, then sir. we'll do other things next year in Kenya. We'll do more teachings, Thank more you. meetings, and bring more understanding. If you're excited, shout hallelujah.
So tomorrow we see you at 9 o'clock. 10, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. And 2 p.m. And 2 p.m. Yes. Don't come late. If you come late, I will have finished part one of my teaching. Come on time. 10 is 10. 2 is 2. Because we really want to cover much grounds tomorrow. We love you guys. Really, really, we love you. And I'm going to wait for a bit for those of you who have books. You want me to autograph. I'm here. I'm going to wait a bit. Bless you. Thank you, choir.